Hey everybody, Matthew from Goblin Pile here. Today we've got round two of the Oath of the Gatewatch Original 5. Um, this is Gideon, Jace, Liliana, Chandra, and Nyssa. Uh, these are the five planeswalkers that are easiest to acquire. Um, they are available to you at the beginning of the game, and they're also fairly cheap. I want to say there's something like 60 crystals, the yellow crystals. Uh, so it's natural for all new players to grab those because it allows them to compete in more more events. Um, so uh, with that in mind, these guys are a little dated, but um, because they're so easily obtainable um, from the outset, I wanted to make a series of videos to kind of highlight how they're useful um, or how, ways in which you can make them useful. Um, as a newer player with perhaps a more limited collection. So, uh, I've already done Gideon, as you guys have seen. Uh, this is Jace, the... What's his what's his shtick? What's his name? Uh, Jace, Telepath Unbound. That's it. Uh, so for Jace's abilities, his first one at 6 loyalty gives minus 5, minus 0 to a creature until the beginning of your next turn. Second one at 12... The last spell you cast or was destroyed is moved into your hand and has its cost reduced by 4. And finally, at 15 loyalty for the ultimate, places 9 trap gems on the board, and those trap gems drain 6 mana from your opponent uh, whenever your opponent matches them. <clears throat> okay, and now onto the deck. So for creatures, we've got two here. We've got Grand Arbiter Augustine IV. He makes blue cards and white cards cost 2 less while he's on the battlefield. Uh, that you control, and then while he's also on the battlefield, his your opponent's cards cost two more. Next we have Goblin Go Electromancer. Uh, he also reduces the cost of cards, um, spells in this case, uh, while he is on the battlefield. Uh, Talent of the Telepath, moving into the spells. This is the one rare. Uh, Augustine was the one mythic that we have. Talent is... Uh, amazingly still holding quite a good bit good value quite a good bit of value it's one of the origins cards that you can grab um uh, for five mana you look at the next three cards in your hand and pick one and it gains six mana and then we go into beacon bolt and this is going to be the primary um, damage engine in the game deal two damage to any target equal sorry deal damage to any target equal to the number of spells in your graveyard uh, and it'll become clear here in a minute why that matters or how that's uh, made, it, how that's taken advantage of. So let's move down into the other spells. The rest of these spells are all fairly cheap. Um, cheap enough, in fact, that uh, with Augustine and uh, the Goblin in play, most of them can be cast for free. So we have Surveil 2 on Discovery here. Uh, and then you can draw a card after you Surveil your 2. Next we have Dispersal on the flip side of that for some removal, just in case you need an alternate method uh, to deal with like hexproof creatures. Moving on, we have Notion Rain for 6 mana, Surveil 2, draw 2 cards, and you take 2 damage. Then we have Winged Words. This spell costs 2 less if you control a creature with flying, and it's a 5 mana spell that lets you draw 2 cards. Now, what's interesting about this card is how it interacts with this one here, with Stratus Walk. Stratus Walk gives you flying, gives your creatures flying. So we've got Goblin Electromancer, which makes spells cost two less, bumping this down to three. We've got Augustine, which makes blue spells cost two less, blue cards cost two less, which makes this now cost one. And if you've got one of them with flying on it, then Winged Words is free, and it'll cast automatically. Uh, Radical Idea, draw a card for four mana. Um, nothing really complicated there. And as Stratus Walk, uh, I just went over that. So three mana to give a creature flying, but it also lets you draw a card. And finally, Artificer's Epiphany. Two mana to draw a card. And if you have a support in play, draw an extra card. Oh, excuse me. There's no supports in this deck, so that second part is irrelevant. But um, what's most important is that it'll cast for free if you have one of your creatures in play. So we're going to go up against Koth here. Uh, don't really know how this is going to go, because Koth can be very brutal to play against, um, and I expect that to be the case here. Uh, so let's see. 
Oh, I should mention, this deck is from Summon Ghost. He's one of the original goblins. He's been around for ages, uh, as far as this game is concerned. And uh, he always has some pretty amazing deck ideas. He's very, very good at deck building, so um, take that into consideration with this. Okay, cool. We have a match five set up on the board here. Uh, we're going to put the goblin in play. And then... Let's see. I think we'll just draw some stuff with these with these draw cards. We'll go with winged words. So that see how that makes a match five after dropping down. Pretty cool. Ooh, awesome. So the whole point of this deck now is to cast as many spells as I can and fill up the graveyard. See, I've got two in there already. Uh, which makes Beacon Bolt more and more uh, damage efficient. So, let's see here. I don't really want to take that green match because it'll set him up. And the last thing Koth needs is help. We'll go with the loyalty. Ugh. Oh, well, okay. It didn't matter in a, anyway, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, we might as well just cast them and get them out there. There's no reason to hang back. Oh, cool. We've got a free card. So we'll go with the Goblin and then Talent and then Artificer's Epiphany. Now the question here is, do I maximize my own mana or do I just kind of try to shut him down? <clears throat> I think I will try to shut him down. It's like I said, Koth needs no help. He's already absurdly lucky car or planeswalker. Just, ugh, I hate him. I hate him. Uh, we're going to get the Grand Arbiter out. I don't need the Goblin right now, so I'll get rid of him. And I think in this case, we, we go here. We go blue into white and then another white. And that might get him into play. Yeah, look at that. That was awesome. Um, yeah, we might as well grab another talent. Cast a beacon bolt. Grab another Augustine. Yeah. So you can see how this goes. Now that I've got my ultimate, I'm going to put that out there. Um, oops, that's weird. It was really delayed. I cast the ultimate, and... Uh, he's now now he's gonna have to deal with that minefield. Now I think Greg, Greg being the AI, I think Greg knows where everything is anyway. When you when you do that, um, because he always manages to avoid them. I'm gonna hold on to this beacon bolt for now because there's a red match and he might end up getting something in place. But we'll cast that. Oh, cool beans. Artificer's epiphany. Yeah, see, those are going to drain him, but he's just going to get 12 mana back right away. That's ludicrous. Um, okay, let's see here. Do I take the blue? Or do I go for more loyalty? I might as well go for the loyalty. Ugh, didn't do so hot there. Uh, let's take Discovery. Oh, no, we'll go Notion Rain. That's what we'll do. Notion Rain. And we will throw away some stuff just to get stuff in the graveyard. And Discovery is going to be free because, remember, I've got those two cards in play. Uh, we'll get Notion Rain, put that in the trash. Uh, let's see... And this is kind of where the whole deck just picks up and gets moving. Because now I've got all this stuff in play. Um, it doesn't matter what... Um, like, it just doesn't matter which cards I draw because I'm just going to draw even more cards. Uh, let's see. We'll get rid of winged words, I guess. Yep. Yeah, just keep on going. <laughs> this is so fun. 
Oh, man. This is a fun deck to play. <clears throat> oh, Rakdos. I hate this guy. Ugh. That's so annoying. And what did he just put in play? Oh, Mirror March. Oh, that's fantastic. Just freaking lovely. All right. Um, but we've got 34 create cards in my graveyard, and 28 of them are spells. So, realistically, 69. I could almost just ignore him, his Rakdos, and just keep trying to ping him to death with these uh, with these beacon bolts. I think I might just do that. Like, yeah, why not? Um, I've got a couple talents out. Yeah, this will be good. Talent of the Telepath. Uh, oh, you know, I should mention, I, uh, I did this in the last video, and I meant to update it to make a change, and I just forgot, and I'm sorry, uh, a lot of you newer players, you might be sitting here wondering, what the hell is this guy casting? I can't see anything come out. And you would be right to say that because um, my cards, I, I, none of them pop up on the screen as I cast them <clears throat> because I play with uh, the visual settings um, altered so that I don't have to deal with all the nonsense and clutter that pops up on the screen all over the place. You know, I I can't stand having that stuff on my screen. It's annoying, and it slows my games down, so I just don't use it. So with my next one, I will make sure to, you know, look at that, 35 damage, 5, boom, we're done. And since that guy was running uh, Mirror March and Rakdos, and I know who the player is, Navici, that guy's been around as long as I have, um, that was probably a pretty top tier deck, but we just blasted through it with this deck of, of simple, um, simple mechanics. So that's one way you can take care of, uh, you can, you can take advantage of Jace. One way you can make use of him. Um, and let me know if you guys have questions, likes, comments, all that stuff. All right. Talk to you later.